So your teacher has assigned a research paper and they want you to make a works cited page, which is a list of citations from all the resources you use, whether they're books or journals or websites or images that you use. They want you to give credit to the maker of those items. So before we get started, I'm just going to show you what a citation is not. Citation is not the URL website address where you found the source. So if you give your teacher a list of these, not only will they be difficult to put in alphabetical order, which is a requirement of a web-cited page or a works-cited page, um, but they're going to be incorrect and you're not going to get any credit. So how do you easily make these citations? Well, you use something called a citation generator. The one that I recommend is called MyBib. Uh, I recommend it because it doesn't have any ads, unlike EasyBib, and it's easy to use. It gives lots of helpful hints, and it downloads into Google Drive seamlessly. So how do you get MyBib? Well, you go to ClassLink, you go to the purple library resources folder, and you look for some little books on a shelf, and you click there and open it. Now, when you open it, for the very first time, where it says, what's new, you will see a, a Google Chrome icon, and it'll ask you to download the Google Chrome extension, which I highly recommend. So. If you don't have that, you can always go to the Chrome Web Store just by Googling Chrome Web Store. And you can type in my bib. And you'll see it here. You'll click on it. And you'll have an option to click Add to Chrome. So once you do that, um, you might still have to get it into your extension bar. So if you go to this little extension icon that looks like, I don't know, a very weird puzzle piece, you will see a list of the extensions you've added. And if you click on the little pin, it will show up in your toolbar. Um, it's possible that you might have to, if, if you're not seeing it or it's not working, you can also go to more tools, extensions, and you have options to turn off and on your extensions. So those are two things you can do to access your extensions that you need. All right, so once you have it, you can start using it. Uh, you go to the green Create a Citation button, and you have a choice of putting in the URL for a website, which is a very popular choice among students. Um, if you do a book, you put in the title, or the ISBN number, which is the number that they use for selling the books, not for checking them out. And journals, which could be, you know, another name for magazines, videos. If you need other things, such as an image that you put in or a song, um, they have all these options for you. Okay, so let's go back to website. And I'm going to pick this website. And I can just highlight it and copy it and bring it back here and paste it in and click search. So this is where the magic generating starts. Looks like it found it for us. It says credibility. It's probably credible. If you hover over there, it tells you what it's missing. It's saying we couldn't verify the quality of the publisher. Well, let's take a closer look at the website. Um, it is written by the Australian government. So if you trust government, then <laughs> you might think that's a good source. Um, so I'm gonna go with it and say that I trust this and I'm gonna click save. So this adds my first citation as I add more of them. Um, it'll put them all in alphabetical order for me. Now, mostly your teachers are gonna be having you use MLA 
which is a certain style of um, of citations. You know, there's like I think 900 different ones. <laughs> So the only other one that your teachers might have you use is something called APA, which is used for science research. So when you type something in there, nothing happens. That always throws me off. You have to scroll down and then you pick, you know, usually the, the latest edition. So if you do that, it just magically changes your citation into the correct format. So, but I'm going to go back to MLA. MLA. And then I scroll down. And I'm going to go for the latest edition. Okay, so now I'm updated. So let's say I want to use that extension that I just downloaded. So here it is. It looks like a little book with a blue arrow. And if I click on that, it once again confirms that this is the style of citation we're going to use. So then I just use my back arrow. And here it is. I can click to copy it and paste it on a document. Or I can click to save it all along with my other citation generators. OK, so once again, this time I have a little question mark about the author. So it's telling me what's missing. So websites rarely have the website author. You should always look, um, but don't get too upset if you don't find it. Uh, this one has, you know, a pretty legitimate sounding name. It is a, a school or a national academy. Um, usually an author or an editor would be listed at the top of the site or maybe at the bottom. I really checked this one over. I even went to About and looked at their staff and tried to find a website editor, but um, I didn't find anything conclu conclusive. So I'm just gonna update and it'll be okay that it's missing the author. The citation is still good and correct. All right, so then I'm going to download my Works Cited page. And most of us are on Chromebooks, so you're gonna pick Google Drive. And it gets very excited when you download your, your Works Cited page, as it should. So let's go over to our drive and see where it is. So definitely if you go to Recent, you will find it. And here are your citations, perfectly spaced, perfectly formatted, and in alphabetical order. Okay, so let's say that your teacher also wants you to add some images or some graphs. Now, those are really hard to generate citations for because you can't just put a URL into the MyBib. You would have to actually figure out who made it, um, when they posted it, when it was published, um, what's it titled? And let's face it, if you go to Google Images, that you're not going to find that information almost ever. And in fact, most of the time when you take pictures from Google Images, you are really stealing somebody's photo that they're trying to sell to support themselves. Um, I don't recommend it as a librarian. So what I do recommend is that you go to one of our paid subscriptions. So once again, go back to our library resources. And since we're looking up tsunamis, I am going to look for a science database. Now this is basically a website that we have to pay thousands of dollars every year for people in high school to use. And we happily do it because it's such a good resource. So I'm going to type in tsunami and do, do, do. I notice that I have lots of different options. So, but what I want are images. So my teacher said get a few good pictures in there to illustrate that are properly scientific. So let's see. 
Well, this is a pretty impressive picture. I'm going to go with this one. And the most important information for you to take away is that there is a wonderful little citation button. And here is the citation for the picture. It is, you know, copyright free or copyright permission given. The citation's here. Here's your MLA. If you need APA, it is there. And what I would do is simply pick Google Drive and download it. So there's a few reasons I would do it this way, even though you could copy and paste right from the page, right? I could do select and do right click copy, but you end up sometimes with formatting issues. So instead, I'm gonna go over to my drive and here it's popped up perfectly, right? So, open, open. All right, here is my citation. It's a Word document that has been downloaded to the drive and I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna do a right click and copy. And I'm gonna go over to my works cited page. Oops, I forgot what letter. It starts with a T because I gotta put in alphabetical order, right? So I'm gonna do it after the last one, which is an E entry, and I'm going to do a paste. Now, do you notice the difference between this font style and this one? So what I found is if you copy, if you, if you download the online database's citation to your drive and then copy and paste it this way, the MyBib document takes over the formatting and then you have exact match for font, style, and size, which by the way, is required by your teachers. So if I was to copy right from here and did a right click copy and put it right into here, it does not look the same. It looks close, but it is not the same. So there you go. It's up to you. A second way of making the two things match is you could always do the format painting. And then everything will match. But then you have to remember what parts are in italics those little slanty words. And um, sometimes that feels like more of a bother. And sometimes you forget. So there's two ways of getting a citation from an online database into your MyBib document on your drive. Um, please do remember that every single one of these uh, ugh, databases will provide the citations for you. So it is a, a wonderful thing and could save you a, a lot of work. And a lot of you know, sadness over time. So let's check out one of these images. And you will notice once again that there's a site. So I would Google Drive it or right click copy into your MyBib and then change the formatting. Okay. So just to review, I'm recommending MyBib. Um, make sure you download the extension. You might need to go to the Chrome Web Store to do it. Um, I will add that MyBib will save all your citations over time. You can always start a new project or you can go back to an old one. Um, you even have the option to merge your different citation projects. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I guess it's just called new project name. Merge. And you can share through the drive or through an email. You can import it anywhere you need it to go. So as you can see, my bib is a great option. It is located on ClassLink in the library resources folder. Okay, happy citation making.